Hello viewers, today's subject is interpretation and styles of theater. In fact, theater has such complexities of matter in a written script that content of the play has to be communicated to the audience through constantly changing living pictures through many means like use of space, through acting levels, visual background, light, sound, colors, texture, etc. These are used in different ways leading to different styles of production. There are mainly two basic or say fundamental styles or ways of translating drama into theater. These styles make all the difference to the meaning and understanding of the play. These styles are presentational style or non-illusionistic style and illusionistic or representational style. Now first we talk about the presentational style. In this form of theater, the production is formal and is arranged for expressive presentation. It is called presentational because it presents the story instead of representing it. It is not presented as it happens in real life. This style has been followed since theatre performance began when audience was not given an illusion that they are seeing something real. Rather set or property was changed in full view of the audience. In classical Indian theatre, suggesting properties or setting only with movements and gestures like a hopping movement of the actor could represent as if he is riding on a horse or on a chariot or when he takes a few steps and declares that he has travelled hundreds of miles. Similarly, the use of symbols for actual objects which means presentation instead of representation of content. It demands of the audience complete suspension of disbelief. The major presentational style of theatre of the West was the Greek theatre. In Greek tragedy, the actors assumed a larger than life appearance. They were huge padded traditional costumes, shoes, had very long stick type very very high wooden high soles, actors used very broad and big masks which were elongated at the top. Their movements were slow and formal, their gestures were very broad, their speech was loud, rhetorical using musical tones as well. Chorus was used which entered in a group, danced and sang, actor used to perform on a low platform facing the chorus. Background had permanent setting in the form of so called building. It was suggestive rather than environmental. Uh, interior scenes were performed on a special platform which seemed to be thrust out of the scene building. Here the actors formed tableaus emerging and vanishing of gods was done with the use of a crane machine operated from the roof. No one had pretended that these were not devices. No one tried to shield the fact that production was anything but theatrical. Now we talk of representational styles. In this style of production, the impact is totally opposite to that of presentational style of production. This type of production aims to give the impression that it is not stylizing or arranging experience but representing it. It creates the illusion of reality or naturalness as though it portrayed people who are not aware that they were playing a role. Characters appeared like real people. They wore clothes they will normally use in a given situation and express themselves in normal speech and movement. 
setting also represented the environment of realistic scenery. Though this kind of performance also arranges the movements, actions and background of a play, but it tries to conceal the fact from the audience in order to maintain the illusion of reality. And now we talk about major standard theatre styles. Major theatre styles of this kind that is standard theatre styles indicate that use of mixture of two styles has been mostly used with certain modifications and changes. Content of illusion was present in presentational style and the other way around in non-presentational style. Elements of illusion were present even in the classical and Elizabethan theatre while presentational kind of performances happened in the post Ibsen period in which realism had been the dominant style. Contemporary theatre is the inheritor of many styles of productions, but dramatic effectiveness has always been the ultimate test of a production. It is said that any style is acceptable to an audience provided it does not seem distinctly inappropriate to the play's structure and content. The directors have to know about these major styles so that they are able to conform to the spirit of a particular play with the use of particular style or form of production which fits appropriately to a particular kind of script. Standard theatre styles may be classified in two divisions. One as traditional styles such as Oriental, Classic, Medieval, Renaissance, Elizabethan, Neoclassic, Restoration and second as modern and postmodern styles such as Realism, Naturalism, Expressionism, Symbolist setting, Formalism, Constructivism, Theatricalism and Demonstrational styles as also Epic Theatre, Theatre of Cruelty and Theatre of the Absurd. So in all these categories first of all we talk about Oriental style. This style is represented mainly by Asian theatre which includes different approaches of Asian countries theatres like Indian theatre, Chinese theatre, Japanese, Burmese and Tibetan theatre. This kind of theatre styles includes suggestive and symbolic setting and props which are gesticulated through body movements, expressions, subtle aesthetic approach in acting, use of masks in some styles like Chinese and Japanese styles. Narrator acts as leader, storyteller, as chorus, as property man. There were no curtains, sometimes few properties were used indicating either interior room or the major motif in the play like uh, clay cart and rich katikam by Shudrak. Platforms were used for dividing interior and exterior parts of the sets. Hanamichis or extended ramps were used in Japanese theatre for entries, exits and chorus singing by actors. In Indian classical play Shakuntala, a garden could be visualized and jungle could be created with the body movements. Audience could imagine any scene through these movements and gestures of the actors or actresses. Singing and dancing has been part of this style of theatre. Presentational style is also justified by the complete informality of the narration. And now comes the classical theatre styles. This form represents Greek theatrical productions, masks, tragic costumes, chorus movements, dancing, gods appearing from the machine, permanent setting were all part of this style of production. Such production styles if reproduced for contemporary staging have to be adapted to suit the contemporary staging conditions where no permanent sets are used, actors are not trained to meet the requirements of this kind of theatre because performances are not held before thousands of numbers of audiences. If held at all, light and sound dramas are enacted with pre-recorded dialogues 
sound effects, lighting effects and huge settings etcetera. Masks can also be dispensed with as we would perform the play before a lesser number of audience or maybe in intimate theater. Actors speech and movements can also be natural and not larger than life. Chorus can be used in between speeches or dialogues. But elements of Greek production can be utilized in neoclassic and modern plays suiting the needs of the content accordingly. Reproducing Roman staging could be easy as action is confined to a particular space. There is no chorus in Roman comedy. Interest is centered on domestic problems which are also part of the plots in modern comedies. Different parts of setting like street marketplace or other parts of town can be worked out with different entrances of stage or house door. Mask whose also be done away with. And then comes the medieval theatre style. In medieval period in England, the religious mystery and miracle plays used to be staged on large double decked decorated pageant wagons. The lower compartment served as the dressing room or for enactment of the area for hell, upper stories used to as a stage space for all types of scenes, the area on the street where audiences stood or sat could be used for actors appearing as devils. The wagon rolled away to another place after the show was over and its place was taken over by another wagon on which another one act play was performed. Acting was presentational, grotesque mass and costumes were worn by the actors. Modifications of such plays are found in modern street theater performances with topical themes, use of masks, colorful costumes and props. Then in Renaissance period, Renaissance style came over. This style of theater developed in Italy beginning with painted perspectives, architectural settings. It also gave way to proscenium arc which became a prominent feature of modern staging. Its operatic form has also been adapted by modern stage directors. Now the Elizabethan style. Chief characteristics of Elizabethan theatre productions was the rhetoric speech, presentational, larger than life style of acting with asides, soliloquies, uh, theatre constructed in the form of square or octagon walled structure without roof for audience area, balconies for elite audience, stage shaped like a rectangle, a large four stage for major action of the play, inner stage covered by curtain for bedroom scenes etc. Upper stage representing high places like hill, the deck of a ship, fort, battlement etc. These spaces filled requirements for many scenes with different places. Many scenes could be staged simultaneously on different areas. In acting, speech was prime consideration. The actor must be able to deliver both the meaning and rhythm or music apparent in the lines. Aside in soliloquies spoken directly to the audience, delivery must be audience directed, creating psychological reality by speaking soliloquies as if the words existed in his mind. Modern stage directors have taken much in terms of understanding the inner action and emotive intensity as well as vast and huge canvas of Shakespearean plays. Then comes the neoclassical style. This style of French stage was essentially modern, action played behind the proscenium arc, setting was pictorial, curtains used to be shut view from the audience when necessary, side wings, backdrops were used, acting was presentational. Moliere's comedies therefore present very few difficulties in production. And then when the restoration period came, 
restoration influenced by both the Elizabethan and the Renaissance theatre provided a compromise between the platform style of staging and modern picture frame setting. Comedy was main type of staging, presentational style with mannerism, comic atmosphere and then come the modern theatre styles. Modern theatre styles started with realism. Here all the action is played behind the proscenium arc, is therefore separated from the audience which peeps into the interiors where actors behave as though they are not being observed. They are completely detached from the audience. Setting represents an actual scene as if it is real, acting is realistic and not over the top. Naturalism is an extension of realism. Truthfulness claimed for this style is literal. Environment is represented to the details. Ibsen and Antoine have been proponent of realism and naturalism respectively. Some other new theatre styles like symbolist setting which was reaction against naturalism was took up by Appiah and Gordon Craig arranging of stage movement and elements of setting to create pictorial beauty. Then expressionism was taken up by Strindberg which stood for intimate theatre. Mechanization of acting and schematization of background was taken up by some other directors. Formalism and constructivism by other styles taken up by Jack Hughes, Copio and Meyerhold respectively. It was plainly theatrical style with many levels and blocks of setting. Tairov and Vakhtangov went for total theatricalism with choreographic principles and grotesque technique. Epic theater was initiated and protected by Berthold Bracht which was an example of demonstrational style with elements of eastern theatre like narrative form, music, dance, placards, detached form of acting and so on. Theatre of the absurd by Samuel Beckett proposed a theatre of inaction or opposite action and theatre of cruelty represented theatre of physical action. All these theatre styles have emerged from the respective social, cultural and environmental and political situations of the period and subsequent directors have altered and created their own way of telling a story using some elements from the style existing before them and evolving newer forms with newer perspectives and requirements of the content. Thank you.